Hello there my RPG lovers and welcome to another video. So this should be interesting because I never did a video like this and they're quite popular nowadays on YouTube. So I, I wanted to take a break from, from series editing and stuff because I just uh, did my review for, for Elden Ring. So that took the life and soul out of me <laughs> for the past month and I wanted to do a light-hearted video. Well, actually, if I think about it, this, this could... Uh, this could be a bit intense for some people, maybe who are really invested into this, into this, um, into this series of games. But if you're following my channel, you probably know my general idea about these games. Although I never said uh, which which is the best game, which is the worst game. Maybe I did, maybe I didn't. I can't really remember. But this is an entirely new concept of of a video, right? And I wanted to chill a bit and do a casual video, I guess. But yeah, let's get to the ranking. So obviously we have all Piranha Bytes games here, uh, and I think the only game which is well, quote unquote, missing it will be Elex 3. So. We know for sure that Piranha Bytes will do Elex 3, so this list would be complete if Elex 3 got released, And but who cares, right? We're going to rank all the games, so there are enough games for, for a decent tier rank here. So we have the first Gothic game, obviously, the game that started it all, so objectively and subjectively, I guess... Uh, there's go obviously going to be a lot of uh, subjectiveness here, if that's the word, because I love these games, right? But I also have uh, a very clear perspective of uh, for each each and every one of them when it comes to this tier rank, uh, tier rank list. Starting with Gothic, uh, that's obviously an S tier. I don't even have to think about it that much because it's the game that started it all. And not only that, this game had a lot of, well, we can say innovation in some way, because it's one of the first, if not the first game that introduced a couple of features that became standard over the next few years in Elder Scrolls games, for example, like a, f a full day and night schedule. It's not the first game that that introduced full, and full day and night schedule and NPC schedule in general, because before that, that there was Ultima 7, I, I believe, that did that first, right? But it's the first... 3D open world RPG that introduced those features. I'm pretty sure of that. Uh, you can fact check me if you want, but I'm pretty sure that it's it's the first game that introduced some of those um, features that became standard, right? It was fully voice acted, even though the English voice acting was pretty bad, to be honest. But back in early 2000s, uh, that was kind of the standard. Uh, only a few games that came out had really good voice acting, so... But it was fully voice acted, nevertheless. The game had a very strong replay value, and you can play it today without too many issues, even though some features didn't really age that well. Like, the controls, I would say, is, it's, it's, the, it's the worst part that, um, that didn't age that, uh, that well over the years, right? But everything else, like the RPG features, the amount of choices you have, and just in general the whole vibe of the game, the atmosphere, the music, and all of that stuff. We're, we're not going to review these games in this video, obviously. Um, I have videos for that that you can check out. Although that reminded me that I don't have reviews for Gothic 1 and Gothic 2, the, like I have for Gothic 3, but we'll get to that, trust me. Um, so yeah, Gothic 1 is without a doubt an S tier game. That brings us to the next game in the series, which is obviously Gothic 2. Gothic 2 was an amazing sequel because it took um, it took all of the good things from Gothic 1 and just improved it and expanded the game. It was a direct sequel to, to Gothic 1, the, the, the story just continued, so and people didn't have to wait too long for this game to, to come out because it came out... Uh, just a year after the first game and this was not this was not uncommon for the games uh, from that time period because if the first game is successful you would see uh, the sequel like a year or uh, two years after that um, you can take the same example from Thief games uh, during during that time period right so it was not uncommon to see a sequel for a good game only a year or a two year uh, two years after the the first game and here's the thing i think that gothic 2 is also an s tier game but i think it's even better than the first game because it improved and expanded all the features that that we could find in the first game gothic 1 obviously set all the fundamentals for this uh, for this uh, game series and pretty much for all games from Piranha Byte Studio, right? But yeah, Gothic 2 just improved uh, a lot of the features from, from the first game, especially when it comes to the controls, because Gothic 2 improved a lot uh, on that field. Even though if you go back and play Gothic 2 now, the controls still kind of suck, to be honest. 
and just like Gothic 1, it's it's the part of the game that didn't they that didn't age so well, but it's still it's still an improvement on that field. And and just in general, even the voice acting started getting better, uh, even though it was not amazing. It still had some pretty pretty bad voice acting, and that trend continue over the years with, with their next games, but. That kind of became a problem with 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 the game budget, and these games never had that, never had a triple A budget or even a double A budget was uh, maybe out of the reach. But yeah, Gothic 2 in general was an amazing game, and the expansion just made the game better in my opinion, and it obviously added more content. So yeah, just in general, Gothic 2 was an amazing game and definitely a tier game, and I would say it's 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 better than Gothic 1. And we came to the point where we have to rank Gothic 3, everyone's favorite Gothic game, right? Now listen, you probably know that I have a lot of love for this game because I talk about it a lot on my channel, I made a bunch of videos about it, and subjectively, I think this game, I'm going to piss off some people, I think this game is probably the best uh, Piranha Bytes game ever, if you ask me personally, but listen, I'm not that blind, I can look at things quite objectively actually, even the things I really love, like Piranha Bytes games, and objectively, this game was far from their best game ever because it had a lot of problems first first of all it had a lot of technical problems at the launch uh, it was almost broken at launch because it came it came out finished because uh, the the publisher at that time uh, uh, if i understood correctly the publisher made them publish the game a lot uh, a lot earlier than it should be because it wasn't ready and it took some time for the community to fix those issues uh, with the community patches. So if you want to play the game today, you will need to fetch a community patch that pretty much fixes all the problems, all the technical issues that the game had, and it also adds a lot of uh, nice features, subtle features that will improve your your experience. But if you take a look at it this way, this game was, was a technical miracle, actually, <laughs> because it had a full open world, a huge open world with three different biomes with no loading screens. So even today, that's impressive to experience in a AAA game, in a AA game, right? When you, when you hear that you have this fully open world with no loading screens and there's a bunch of areas, a bunch of caves, a bunch of dungeons and open areas and houses and whatnot, right? With no loading screens. That's also impressive to hear today, right? So even if you hate this game for whatever reason, it, it deserves some praise for that, right? I think you would agree. Uh, but... But just in general as a game itself, it was not that good when it comes to some features because it was obviously unfinished and some people might find the quests a bit too MMO-ish, if that's a word. Uh, there, there was a lot of fetch quests and the quest in, and the story in general was not that compelling and uh, well built like in, in the previous two Gatti games, so objectively that part of the game was not that great. But I still think it had a lot to offer when it comes to the open world itself and th the way you saw quests were, was was really interesting to me and because you had a lot of freedom even though the quests uh, themselves were not that great. In terms of narrative design it wasn't so great, right? But just in general it was really fun to, to do them, at least for me. By the way, I have a full review or retrospective video for this game. It's, it's around uh, 1 hour and 20 minutes or something like that. So you can check it out on the channel if you wish to, so if you wish to hear my full thoughts about the game. But I have to rank it objectively here. Well, objectively. <laughs> so I'm going to place Gothic 3 as as a B. It's it's a B, let's be honest. I don't think it's a C or D. I would even put it at uh, put it at uh, low A and so yeah, it's it's high B, low A, if you ask me objectively, but subjectively it would be like this. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that would piss off a lot of people, and I, I have to say that objectively, that's that's not a good, uh, not a good um, view to have of, of these games. We have to keep it real. So I'm going to place it at B. So yeah, my favorite game, probably ever, uh, is is on B. So yeah, that should tell you a lot about my objectiveness. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we came to reason one. So reason one uh, was. Was supposed to be a redeeming factor when it comes to Piranha Bytes games because Piranha Bytes knew that Gothic 3 was a disappointment to many people because it was obviously unfinished uh, and full of bugs and whatnot. And their previous games were not that buggy or it didn't, they, they didn't have that many technical issues, if if not if not at all, right? Uh, but but yeah, so they knew that reason 
their, their new game series will have to start off strong. The first time I started playing this game, it really reminded me of early Gothic games, of Gothic 2 and Gothic 1. The way it's designed, you have this... Uh, you have a lot smaller map, but it's a it's a it's a lot denser map with with a lot of things to find, and it worked really similar to to Gothic 2. And I think the setting and the story was pretty good. Although I have to admit that my memory is a bit clouded when it comes to this game because it's been a while since I played it, but I know the main gist of it and how it how this how it started, how it ended, uh, and all the options you had uh, while playing the game. If you ask people who played this game back in the day, they will probably tell you that this game was supposed to be Gothic 3. This is the real Gothic 3, right? Even though I don't agree with that statement, obviously. But I see what they mean, right? The game didn't have any technical issues or any major technical issues, except the Xbox version, which was horrible, to be honest. But that was the first Xbox or... This is actually the first console game from Piranha Bytes, if I'm not mistaken. So that was pretty, pretty bad. And yeah, unfortunately that was really bad for, for the consoles, but the PC version was far superior, not only in terms of graphics, but in terms of how the game worked and pretty much in general, right? But yeah, I think that Reason 1 was an amazing game in general and it was a big comeback for this game studio. It was sort of a remedy for some <laughs> gothic fans. Uh, that got burned with Gothic 3 and and another game that's not on this list, which is Gothic 3 Forsaken Gods, but that's not a game developed by, by Piranha Bytes games, so I'm not even going to talk about it because it doesn't deserve to be mentioned. I'm actually having a hard time to rank Reason 1 because I'm debating between S and A, but I'm going to rank it as high A, if you ask me. It's low S tier, high A tier, if that makes sense. So yeah, Reason 1, amazing game arguably an S tier game or high A tier game. It's definitely one of the best games from this studio, so so yeah, there we go. And unfortunately that tradition didn't continue because we got Reason 2. Now if you ask me, this is the worst game that Piranha Bytes ever did for many reasons. That's why I'm going to place it at D. Now listen, Reason 2 is the game that I played the least from all of this from all of these Piranha Bytes games. I played it maybe collectively like 10 or 15 hours or something like that and I just gave up so I don't know a lot about the game I didn't complete it so so I can't really uh, I can't really give you my in-depth thoughts about it but I plan to revisit it and maybe give it another chance and maybe do a full review for it or something like that but as of as of now I think that reason 2 is definitely the worst game reason 2 is definitely the worst game that Piranha Bytes ever did because I just hated it right from the beginning and one of the major reasons why I hated it so much is the whole change uh, of setting and the story 180 degree turn because all of a sudden we have pirates, all of a sudden we have uh, guns and I thought that was so bad and out of place and it just didn't click with me, it didn't click at all because the setting in Reason 1 was so great and it set, the, the, and it set all the fundamentals that the Reason series could have uh without without the whole pirate team without the whole uh, without the whole guns team without the whole ships thing right but someone in piranha bites had a hard on for pirates i guess so they they uh, strayed away from the original formula from the original uh, reason setting that was more of a medieval uh, slash fantasy setting and they went into the whole pirate team which is like this whole um, it had its own thing it was pirates and not only that, the world map was not not all that great, and I think it's hands down the worst uh, game world that Piranha Bytes ever did. You had a bunch of these smaller islands that you could explore, but none of them were so compelling and interesting to explore like the whole map in Reason 1. And not to mention the, the Gatti games, right? So yeah, I think that Reason 2 was the worst game they ever did for all of those reasons I mentioned. But like I said, I'm going to make a review or come back to the game and play it. Not only Reason 2, but I plan to revisit the whole Reason series and maybe do a, a, a full review for all of those games in one video or something like that. But that seems like a lot of work. <laughs> like I said, I just came, out, I just came from... Uh, a huge review of, uh, for Elden Ring, so yeah, I have to chill a bit and and uh, recollect my thoughts. Anyway, we're getting off topic here, so let's continue. So we have Reason 3 next. Reason 3 was supposed to be the back to the roots kind of a game because it, they even had they even had a whole uh, trailer for the game that was called Back to the Roots, which meant uh, back to the old gothic roots. So yeah, back to the roots, back to the whole gothic uh, design, right? 
uh, but Reason 3 in general was a really mediocre game if you ask me. It was not nearly as bad as Reason 2, it improved a lot of things, but it continued the same philosophy of pirates and it, it, it's a very similar uh, setting of the game that really bothered me in, got it in Reason 2 and that just continued in Reason 3, even though, even though it was to a lot lesser degree, uh, because it had it had a lot more, it had a lot bigger focus on, on factions and we got the magic back, we got uh, we, we got more interesting factions in general and the world map was a bit better than Reason 2 but it was still not nearly as good as in Reason 1 and previous Gati games so that was a big uh, disappointment for me but objectively it was a lot better game than Reason 2 uh, I didn't hate it, I didn't love it so like I said it was a pretty mediocre game for me even though this game uh, addressed some of the some of the major problems that people always have with Anabyte's games like uh, animations in combat. I think that I think that magic animations and animations in general were pretty smooth in this game and one of the smoothest animations in combat that Pyranobites ever did. If, if you check out how the character is casting uh, spells and how it feels, it didn't just look good, it felt good when you control your character. And Reason 3 was also one of the most accessible game for new players because because of this, not, not just because of the improved animations in combat, but just in general I think it was the most accessible game for new players. Piranobites games are always kinda hardcore in the beginning and new players might have a lot of problems uh, when it comes to this, but Reason 3 is one of the most accessible games uh, for new players definitely, not only because of the improved animations in combat, but just in general I think it was a lot more accessible. Okay phone. Long story short, I think Reason 3 is a mediocre game at best and I would rank it as maybe high C. So yeah, C tier, but maybe not high C, but if you would have a lot more games to rank, I would rank it like it would be like in the middle of a C tier, somewhere like that. So yeah, mediocre at best. I didn't hate it, I didn't love it, so there you go. And we finally came to some recent games from this game studio. So Elix was obviously a brand new IP from this studio, so that means we get a brand new story, a brand new setting, and brand new everything. Except the game fundamentals that were that were established all the way back to all the way back to Gothic 1. Anyway, to be honest, I wasn't that impressed when I first saw the trailer for this game because I'm not a huge fan of futuristic settings, I'm not a huge fan of post-apocalyptic post settings, even though I like Fallout games. I can still play them, I can still enjoy them, but medieval and fantasy settings are what I have the, the biggest passion for when it comes to making videos, when it comes to just playing the games, right? Uh, so I wasn't that impressed, especially when I saw those guns, right? Because, like I said, the reason, no, reason to introduce guns, and I was never a huge fan of that. It just didn't feel right. Let's be honest, Piranha Bytes is not that great when it comes to combat mechanics, and this whole switch to uh, fire weapons and uh, modern weapons in general was was not all that smooth. But the main thing that got me concerned about this game in general was the introduction of the jetpack because I thought it was going to ruin the exploration uh, in a way because a large part of Piranha Bytes games in general was about exploration for me and exploring the amazing uh, handcrafted world and just exploration in general, right? So all of a sudden you have this mechanic in terms of a jetpack that will affect the exploration in a way and I was really concerned that it's going to affect the exploration in a very negative way because obviously, obviously I didn't know how it's going to work uh, just by watching the trailers but I thought it's going to ruin the exploration basically. It turns out the jetpack was one of the best things that Piranha Bytes ever did in their newer games. Uh, which was really surprising to me because it was very specific in terms of how it worked. You only had uh, enough fuel for reaching that next reaching that next cliff for reaching that next landing space uh, so I completely changed my opinion about about the whole jetpack thing and even the whole game I completely changed my opinion about the whole game um, almost I still think the game had uh, had some notable issues and some problems that weren't supposed to happen because it was kind of mind-boggling to me uh, because Reason 3, even though it was a, even though it was a pretty mediocre game, like I said, it established some of the combat features, uh, like uh, like like those good animations that I mentioned when when the character is casting magic when you fight, and that was a big leap uh, when it comes to their games, if you ask me. And I thought it's going to bring some more people, some more new people into into these games, 
because they finally started addressing those problems that a lot of people had when it comes to the combat system and and yeah but elix one was a whole 180 degree turn <laughs> once again when it comes to combat mechanics because they built uh, a brand new combat system from the scratch and i don't think that was a good idea because the combat system had a lot of problems it was it felt really stiff a lot of people complained about animations in combat and they thought that was the main reason for for the bad combat system in elix but i don't think animations were, were the problem I think uh, I think how I think the controls and the responsiveness of the combat was the problem and animations were if you just watch the animations they they were not that bad I can name like five games on top of my mind that had worse animations than this and they felt uh, better than Elix 1 combat uh, so yeah I don't think the animations were the problem that much even though I thought that Reason 3 had a much better animation uh, animation pack in general uh, like that magic animations that I talked about before uh, so yeah it was a step back definitely when it comes to animations in combat, but it was not the main issue if you ask me. You get this really stiff feeling when you control Jax in combat and that was the main issue and I would put my finger on the controls and the unresponsiveness of, of the controls in general when it comes to the bad feeling in combat in Elex 1. And once again you have all of these ranged fire weapons that they had to work with and they all felt the same. They all felt the like, like you're using a default ranged weapon even if you use the even if you use the, some heavy uh, heavy range weapon like the like the rocket launcher or or pretty much everything felt the same so yeah that was definitely the problem but on the other side i think elex 1 had a great open world to explore an amazing open world even that reminded me a lot of gothic 3 actually so yeah the open world and the exploration in elex 1 was stellar right it it was amazing amazing experience another major reason why i really love this game is uh is the improvements in the storytelling improvements in voice acting when it comes to uh, smaller budget games like elex and double uh, a games in general so uh, they made a lot of improvements on that field the storytelling and the dialogue improved a lot compared to the previous games and yeah like i said uh, voice acting was a lot better compared to the previous games even though it, it was still not great it was far from great to be honest uh, but it was still a lot better uh, in general right and once i completed the game for for a couple of times i actually thought that the setting and the story itself was really interesting and really unique even though it was a bit unconventional because it was a mix of sci-fi medieval and post-apocalyptic settings which doesn't go that well together so that came as a surprise to me because I thought I'm going to hate this uh, new story and the setting like I hated it in Reason 2 and Reason 3. But to my surprise, I actually thought it was an amazing story and, and setting and very unique. And uh, the most important, it's really interesting to learn about this lore and the setting in general. So yeah, even though it had a lot of problems, Elex 1 was... Elex 1 was the true back to the roots, if you ask me. Uh, especially because, like I said, the open world reminded me a lot of uh, Gothic 3 because... Maybe just because of the size of the world, uh, they went back to that uh, whole uh, uh, huge map, uh, huge open world map with a bunch of different biomes and interesting factions to join and stuff like that. So it definitely reminded me a bit of Gothic 3 in that, in that, uh, in that regard. In terms of ranking, I'm kind of having a hard time to rank it, but I would put it at a lower B. So I would put it uh, below Gothic 3 definitely, but it's still a big game if you ask me i had a lot of fun playing the game and making videos about it but i wouldn't rank it below b definitely not in the reason 3 category so it's it's b tier game if you ask me uh, it's lower than gothic 3 but it was still a pretty good game in general if you ask me so it had a lot of problems definitely if you could handle all the problems it had you could easily get like 150 hours plus of content and so yeah like i said it had a lot of replay value and a lot of quality quests and interesting story and settings so yeah that's that's about it when it comes to lx1 i think I'm, i was pretty clear when it comes to this game and we finally came to the most recent game that Piranha Bytes released, which is obviously Elix 2. It's always kind of hard to rank uh, games that came out recently because there is a thing called recency bias, but I think I have a pretty good idea when it comes to this game uh, because I played it for more than uh, collectively on my PS5 and PC I have around uh, 200 plus hours or something like that. I think that's fair enough, <laughs> fair enough for uh, judging it properly. But putting that aside, I think Elex 2 was a major improvement in almost all fields. When you play this game and go back to Elex 1, Elex 1 almost felt like an early alpha build of Elex 2. 
uh, in terms of combat mechanics and in terms of the in terms of the feel of the gameplay, right? This game is also a direct sequel to Elex One, so the story continues, the setting is the same, even though you have this small uh, time jump time jump between the between the stories. Uh, but it's just a direct sequel and it's, it just continues the, the whole story of the first game, which was kind of neat because I'm not a huge fan of uh, sequels that move so far from the original game, like you have this 100 year gap between two games. I'm not a huge fan of that philosophy, so I much more prefer the direct sequels uh, when it comes to the story and setting. If you ask me, the combat system and the whole gameplay was vastly improved. Like I said, the major problem in Elex 1 was the, the feel of the controls and the feel of the gameplay in general, how stiff it was and stuff like that, right? The main issue I personally had with the combat system in the first game, which is the control system and how stiff it felt, uh, was addressed in the sequel because Elex 2 had a lot better controls, it felt a lot better to control Jax and the whole combat system was uh, changed from the core almost because the whole combo system from the first game got scrapped entirely even though the combat system in general in elex 2 was not amazing by any means it was a major improvement compared to elex 1 and i think uh, it's enough for it's enough to bring new people uh, new people in the series and uh, more importantly the the difficulties were a lot more balanced compared to the first game where some difficulties were uh, completely broken like the the ultra difficulty and hard difficulties in general were not that balanced and almost completely broken so elex 2 addressed all of those problems when you have more balanced difficulties you automatically make your game more accessible to new players even though your game still remains hardcore in in some way especially in the beginning when uh, when your character is really weak before you can get some new armor some new skills it's it's the same philosophy that piranha bites always did in the past with their uh, with their previous titles right but when it comes to some other aspects like uh, like some later chapters in the game they kind of artificially extended the, the the length of the game with some repeated quests and it kind of it kind of got repetitive which was kind of weird to experience in their games because i never thought their previous games were repetitive in almost any in, in, in almost any regard. So the main problem I had with Elex 2 was those later chapters and how the story kind of got artificially extended with some of the repetitive quests where you have to kill a bunch of things. So they kind of overused the, the, the killing stuff quests. Uh, even though I think quests in general are really, really good in this game, even better than the first game. And I had praises for Elex 1 quest, uh, quest design and quest in general. So I think the game has a lot of quality quests and a lot of quality content. Uh, and as, as always, it has a lot of replay value in terms of uh, joining new factions and just exploring the whole world because it's such a huge open world uh, that you, it will take you at least a couple of playthroughs to see everything, definitely. And we have to mention the jetpack again because it was also improved. Uh, they, they took the same mechanic, but they improved it. They created the whole uh, pr whole progression line when it comes to the jetpack itself, so you can improve it by collecting resources and improving your skills. And funny thing about that, I had the same concerns for Elex 2, uh, which I had uh, for Elex 1 when it comes to the jetpack, because, uh, like I said, I thought that the jetpack in Elex 1 was going to ruin the whole exploration in the game, uh, which turned out to be false, right? And when I saw that the jetpack in Elex 2 was going to be improved, that you can actually fly with it, I didn't think flying was a good idea when it comes to when it comes to any other games, basically, because, uh, like I said, the exploration was uh, always the, the, one of the best parts of their games, and exploring it on foot, even without any mounts, is is one of the best things you can experience in their games. So I was kind of worried about uh, the whole flying thing and improved jetpack, <laughs> but it, that also turned out to be... Uh, to be false, my uh, my uh, concerns were not justified because you don't actually get to fly with the jetpack in Elex 2 uh, until you get very late in the game and actually you have to finish the whole game, the whole main quest line, until you unlock the ability to just fly without worrying about your fuel levels because Elex 2 uh, introduced fuel levels uh, for your jetpack that, that you have to increase. You could get a lot of these abilities very early in the game, like the ability to propel forward with your jetpack, which made the exploration really fun because you could get away from the danger or go to the danger faster or just use it for 
for uh, for covering more terrain when you when you explore, right? And even though the world map was essentially the same like in the first game, it never felt the same when you explore it because uh, they, they did a few things to to make it to make it feel a lot different, especially when it comes to the scaling of, of, of the buildings or the and of the whole world in general. It felt a lot bigger and a bit stretched out, and not in a bad way, just to make the exploration with your new jetpack abilities uh, more suitable, I guess. But it never felt artificial because of that, and the exploration was still stellar and even better than the first game. So yeah, the, the world space, the story uh, was equally equally interesting as, as the first one, even though I have a lot of problems with how the game ended because it ended on a huge cliffhanger, exactly like the first game, but I didn't have problems with, uh, with how the first game ended. Uh, because it was a new game in the series and it just uh, set, the all uh, set the all fundamentals of, the, of this game series and I didn't have a lot of issues with how that game ended but I had a lot of issues how Elex 2 ended because it's just a sequel bait and now we have to wait a couple of years before we get all the answers even though Elex 2 answered a lot of the questions I had from the, from the first game, from the first game story, right? but it didn't answer them all, <laughs> so yeah I was kind of pissed. Uh, I was kind of pissed off at the story, at the main story, and how it ended. So that definitely took away some points in my review about the game that you can check out. By the way, uh, it's a 40-minute review that I did. Um, it's a 100-hour-plus review. So yeah, at that point, I had like 100, 110 hours or something like that, which is usually what I prefer to do with all the games I review, right? Uh, if possible. Anyway, we have to rank this game before this video turns out to be like three hours long, and I. This is probably the, the, the hardest uh, game that I have to rank on this list because, like I said, there is a thing called recency bias and my opinion might change as, as time goes by, but uh, as of now, uh, like I said, it's, it's, definitely a, it's definitely an improvement, uh, a huge improvement over Elex 1, and so it's a better game than Elex 1. And in some regards, objectively, it's a better game than Gothic 3, but I just played a ton of Gothic 3 and I keep coming back to it and just if I take that in consideration, I think Gothic 3 is a better game. But objectively, so this will be like, uh, this will be my subjective uh, placing, like it will be better than Elex 1, it will be a B game uh, and it will be below Gothic 3. But if I would have to turn on my subjective, uh, no, obje sorry, objective, uh, uh, point of view, I would rank it uh, maybe uh, as an A tier, but very low, very low A tier. So even though it's very next to Risen, which I uh, which I thought it was a strong A ranking, I would say that Elex 2 was not that close uh, to the general quality of the first Risen game, even though I would rank it like this. Yeah, like I said, it's kind of hard for me to rank this game uh, because I'm pretty sure it's. Uh, I'm. I'm. I'm positive that that it's a lot better than Elex One. It had a lot of improvements and stuff like that. It had some new stuff that we never that we never saw in in, in Piranha Bytes games. Uh, and just the, and just in general, the the whole quality of the game was was really high uh, for a double A RPG. Uh, so I <laughs> I don't know, man. I would play. Okay, let's let's place it. This is my final ranking. Let's place it as a low A tier game so even though i think it's an a tier game i don't think it's a high a tier game so uh it's it's just uh it objectively it's just a little bit better game than, than gothic 3 if you ask me so there you have it <laughs> wow this was a lot harder than i thought it was going to be for some reason but uh we finally got to the end and i guess this is my final uh final list of all piranha bytes games that were ever made so I'm definitely curious to see your opinion and to see how you would rank these games on the tier list and you will find that link in the in the pinned comment on this video and you can also join our discord where we discuss about RPG games in general so I'll leave the link for that in the description as well. That will be all for this video I guess but you know what before we leave I think there is one one thing left for me to do and that's um, <clears throat> place this game where it should supposed to be. So yeah, I think this is the real tier list here. <laughs> anyway guys, if you enjoyed the video, pressing the thumbs up button would mean a lot and subscribing to the channel would do wonders for the growth of this uh, RPG community we, we are building over the years here. That will be all and I'll see ya in the next one.